Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're at Formnext in Germany. We're taking a look at some of the latest and greatest tech in 3D printing. We're talking with some new partners, some old partners, and we're going to chop this up into lots of different videos so that we can try to cover as much as humanly possible. But first of all, let's play a game of jacket, no jacket, because sometimes I'm going to be hot and sometimes I'm not. And it's going to make it really difficult from an editing perspective. <laughs> Let's get in there. Hello guys and dolls, welcome back. So we are at the RLP stand and we are looking at one of the brand new technologies being shown at the show. So talk us through what it is exactly we're looking at, because there are incredibly flexible elastomers being printed here, and the way that you're doing it, I keep watching the video and I keep seeing the thing, and it's insane. So, so talk to me about what it does, some of the benefits, yeah. Absolutely, so we've been developing this since 2015, and the reality is that we're creating a platform here where you can go from a design to print, to just washing your part to a finished product in just minutes yep. instead of taking weeks or months that it takes by traditional manufacturing. So ultimately we're eliminating the need for mold to be created for silicone or elastomer products. We're also reducing the print time because we don't have to do supports. We don't have to do a layer by layer approach anymore. Because we're printing in this gel, very attractive and fun thing to interact with, um, it eliminates the effects of gravity. So ultimately we can have the freedom to draw in 3D space, almost like calligraphy in 3D space, which allows us to do really flexible, unique, even impossible to be made any other way products um, from textures to functional parts here. Um, and the process is simple. You're extruding it inside of the gel suspension you're literally just dropping the ink, which is all silicone product at the moment. After it's printed and cured in the gel, you're extracting it, as you can see in the video here, and simply washing it off with water. And that's it. No post-processing, no post-curing involved, and you have a finished product so in minutes. Cool. So let's try and put that in terms that, that sort of 3D printing normal people can half understand, sure. right? So the closest technology I can think of is SLS, right? So SLS, you have a, you have a, a vat of powder uh, yeah. that you then center with a laser. It requires no supports because, there's, because the rest of the powder that's in there acts as a suspension, and it means that you can do new geometries and you can stack parts sure. and things like this. But then we come to this, because this isn't just being able to print in whatever geometry you want. It's then non-planar printing, Correct. which is where you do not have to print in a straight layer. So you're not printing in X, Y, and Z. You're able to print really complex topographies, sure. which also require no support. No support. Which require no post-processing. No post-processing. And we'll put up a little thingy in a minute of, of some of the things these guys have done, but the, the surface finish on these is also production ready. These exactly. We're not talking about taking this out and then having to do a bunch of stuff. It's run it under the tap and I will very bravely place my hands inside of the, <laughs> what I have been assured is non-toxic. Non-toxic. <laughs> Absolutely. By a number of MIT students. So it does feel like I can believe them, but it's also really sticky. So, uh, so it's, it's, what are some of the applications for this moving forward? Sure. And since you already touched upon it, we, it is end use application that we're focused on. We're using 100% silicone products, same material that's used in injection molding, except we're eliminating the need for mold altogether. So some of the applications that we've been pushing forward and, and diving into are prosthetic and orthotics. So prosthetic for amputees, a prosthetic liner is a sock-like interface that goes over a limb. So we're able to actually produce custom application, right? Those are the things that are quite expensive for patients to use yeah. and takes time to make. Typically with the traditional manufacturing process, it takes almost two weeks from scan to manufacturing, usually by hand, in order to get it back to the patient. Within two hours, we have a finished product that yeah. can be shipped out the door for a patient. So we're, the turnaround time is incredible. So here we are in front of one of the mock vats. Um, this is obviously stuff that has been previously printed and put in the fluid, but ultimately this is how the stuff prints right Correct. it's just it's this is the suspension fluid and you just 
stick your hand in. <laughs> And you pull out a part. Yeah, and it's all done. And it's done. And I mean, it's so weird. <laughs> but, it's, but I mean, it's, it's there. It's, it's a real part that is now also a part of me. So that's really nice. It's Matrix-like. <laughs> it's futuristic. It's the future of manufacturing. So talk about... So obviously, you, you guys don't sell the machines. You sell the service. Correct. Right? So, so this isn't about the machines. But talk about sort of capabilities of the machines that you've got. Are you limited in size? Is it literally just build a bigger <coughs> y-axis? Because there's no, n there's no fundamental mechanical stress in making a bigger machine. Correct. It's just you need a bigger vat with more suspension fluid, exactly. and then you just go. Yeah. Ultimately, you can optimize that machine and change any dimension that you want. Imagine a pool full of this vat yeah. with a big gantry system. Even this whole space could be filled with gel and you're able to print with it. So you're really unlimited in terms of what you can produce. Yeah. Um, and the parts, once they're done and they're rinsed, they're industry standard, ready, performance-wise, they resist heat, cold temperatures, um, and have a lot don't break down with UV like any other you know, yep. systems that exist in the market. Because you have all the benefits of silicon, right? Which Correct. is that it's incredibly flexible, incredibly durable, incredibly reusable. And then you can also uh, <laughs> get out really complicated geometries like this. So this is almost unthinkable kind of lattice design yeah. that you can't really achieve with most FDM machines. Um, and even in SLS, it would be it would be difficult because of how fine the lattice is. Correct. And, you know, another step further that where we take it is actually some of the examples on the wall that you'll see is within these lattices, we can actually embed bladders, right? So you start to push forward what the foam or cushioning system can become now because we can actually create bladders embedded inside of lattices for future of comfort and seating. So cool. Really sticky. Need to wash my hands. <laughs> so... Thank you very much for taking the Thank time. Thank you. Thank you for letting me stick my hands inside of things that I'm 99% sure people aren't supposed to be sticking their hands in at the show. And I will shake your hand after I've uh, dried them. That would be appreciated. <laughs>